See that? All handmade. Well, at least I don't have to go and replenish my little bird bath. <laughs> you know, that thing is cast iron, all one piece, and it is heavy. I think the ones they make today are made of cast ceramic, maybe, or cement. Oh, I don't know. But anyway, I found that under the staircase in the basement. It's old. It might even be as old as this house. Yeah, I plan on painting it this summer, making sure that it's rust proof and that it lasts another hundred years. It's very decorative. I'll show it to you later. I'm not going out there in this mess. Even the squirrel is hiding somewhere. Hmm. Well, I love these two pieces. Now this one is clearly from the Depression era, the 30s and the 40s. Um, clear glass, but it's in really nice condition. This measuring cup for the kitchen. And it is marked on the bottom. I can't really, I'm not sure uh, of the mark because I can't see it, but I don't really need to see it. I know that it's of that era. And look at this beautiful EAPG pitcher. Now it's um, pressed, not cut, but it's in wonderful condition and it's really a handsome pattern, I think. I'll back up and let you see it. Uh, nice and heavy, absolutely. I did already run my fingers over it and make sure it was in good shape, and it is. Now it's raining in here, <laughs> it's not raining in here, it's raining outside and there aren't very many people here and they just wheeled out some new items so let me take a walk over there and see what they brought out oh that's a big one that's a big one looks like they ripped the price off of it yeah that's a little too big for me to keep or to ship ah the manhattan inserts Ooh, they're greasy now i don't need these but uh Ooh. You know, for the Man for the uh, Manhattan trays by Anchor Hawking. That's a pretty, that little casserole thing down there. And that's looking very 60s. It's a bad chip in that. I've got some things in my cart already. I do, I do. I can never remember that. Is that? I can never remember that pattern. We've got a piece of carnival glass, a Christmas candle, which might be girly, and a uh, piece of goofus glass. We'll take a closer look at that when we uh, get outside into the truck. Uh, let's see, okay, so there's all of that stuff. Let me turn around in this direction. It's, uh, oh, 4.30 in the afternoon, and the people that put out the fresh items have gone home for the day. So that means the people that hang out in here all day are gone. So I like to get here when those people are, when they're not here. That's what I like to do. Look at FDR on a bottle. Mm-hmm. Okay, around the corner, as we go down the aisle, I'm not catching anything. Uh, eh. There's, there's a lot of screaming in here. Uh, some nice big dishes there. 
Now that's beautiful. This thing actually dates to the 1930s. Some of you will call it a hutch. Some of you will call it a china closet. Some of you will call it a curio cabinet. We can see back here, you've got the lines for the dishes to go in it. And this is all the original paint on it as well. Yeah, really not hutch because it's got ca cabinet doors. Um, yeah, all original paint. In an Asian style, some would say chinoiserie, we'll just say an Asian theme, you can see painted on the front. And this type of thing was popular in the 30s. It's never been repainted. That's wonderful. Uh, somebody's even put some old cracked ice contact paper on the inside. But the original hardware, the original surfaces, Look at this. Let me back up so you can see the whole thing. That's very nice. Sometimes radio cabinets were painted in this fashion. Boy, that's nice. And just some more 1940s. And we'll keep going back here. <clears throat> You're always gonna find one of those, and I think we've talked about those to death. More furniture from the 19... Oh, we've got it all. 60s, 70s, 80s. I think we've looked over there. There's a nice waterfall front. Late 30s. It is so difficult to find buyers for this today. It just, oh, it's a tough, tough, tough sell. And a lot of us remember it. It was affordable, streamlined furniture in the 1940s, the 30s. Yeah, 1930s. That's the piece right there. That's a nice one. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, um, I got stuff to do. Let's go to another shop. Well, I've talked about waffle sets, pancake sets so much. As we know, serving waffles at the breakfast table was quite the rage in the 1920s and people would have waffle parties. In fact, you could read articles in ladies magazines about how to have your own waffle party and people would get all dressed up and they would bring the waffle iron out and there were all these pots and pans and things especially made for the occasion. Here's a set probably made in Japan. It's in a majolica kind of a style and this is your syrup and your pancake batter or your waffle batter and this is what's called the duck bill spout right when you see that it's not for coffee it's not for tea extra large spout there or pouring uh spout for, to get the syrup to get the uh, uh waffle mix out and then this of course would be for the syrup and it's on an under plate this is marked at 49 dollars for that waffle set and uh you'll see these quite often in the 1920s into the early 30s and then they kind of disappear yeah a few times in the past when I've mentioned a girly candle, folks who are not conversant with the girly candle company, spelled with an E in there, I think, uh, they think that I'm saying that this is just for girls and not boys. Nah, uh, but I think most of you knew that. So a candle doesn't say girly on the bottom, but it says novelty candles because of their irregular shape and the frequent presence of air currents or drafts may drip. We suggest that the candle be placed on a plate while burning made in USA. He's got to be from the 50s or the 60s, I would think. As much goofus glass as there was, I rarely find it. Uh, oddly enough, called goofus by collectors because they got goofed when they bought the glass thinking it was, I'm trying to get the sticker out, when they bought the glass thinking that it was just beautiful colored glass. 
they realize later that it's paint and the paint chips off. Now that's pretty good condition for Goofus glass. It's just a small dish and they are usually this red and gold color. You will sometimes find some other colors uh, but this was cheap, cheap glass. Not too bad. I like it when it's not uh, repainted. I may just keep that because I feel as though I need an example of Goofus glass. And now I've got it. I also bought today at the thrift shop a uh, nice piece of uh, carnival glass. This one is amethyst, and of course we look at the base color there, which we can see is a purplish color. Um, I don't know the name of the pattern on that one. This piece really needs to be washed. And I think most folks are familiar with uh, the various companies that made carnival glass. This isn't outstanding, but it's just a nice example. And and I, I do always buy carnival glass when I when I find it. This needs a good cleaning, a really good cleaning, but I will take care of it. Now let me get this off of here. This is a, this is giving me problems. Um, I love it when I find them with a green percolator top. Now this isn't Bakelite, it's painted uh, wood and some of the paint is coming off there. This really needs to be cleaned and tested and you know what I do with my uh, 1930s coffee pots. But we'll get it inside and work on it and it should be okay. Well, I've decided to unload some things from my truck and this is the piece of Victorian furniture <clears throat> that I wanted to show you the other day and didn't get a chance to because it was raining. That's a, um, by the way, I'm around the back of my house and just ignore all of the, I've been moving things around and uh, I need to get that junk taken off. But there is, uh, that's it right there. At first glance, it might look like some piece of colonial furniture, reproduction furniture from the 1970s. But this piece actually dates to Oh, 1870 to about 1900, somewhere in there. And it's a country piece of furniture, a late Victorian piece. And if we zoom in on it, we can really see. Now this is made of pine and this is a nice old original finish on it. Uh, so what you see lock me ne mechanism on the inside and if we look at the joints that are on the side this is what's this is sort of a derivation of the nap joint uh, or uh, cove and finger so you have basically almost a butt joint here and um, rather than a mortise and tenon or uh, dovetail or whatnot now this is not machine done it's all hand done we can see that the local craftsman who did this must have been aware of this type of joinery here called pin and pin and cove i think knapp was the guy that invented it but when it's done when it's done on a machine it looks it looks quite different from this in fact i'll insert some pictures here of um the machine made knapp joints right and then we can see the way this one was handcrafted, probably by a local uh, furniture maker in South Jersey. <laughs> Somebody got onto the, some little child got onto the back and drew that. Uh, but this boy, if this piece of furniture could talk, it certainly would tell us a tale. So not a true finger and cove joint, but inspired by that type of joinery. I guess if I come over here, it's, you're not going to be able to see as much uh, from the sun. Uh, let's go over here on this side. And I know it looks kind of odd, the, the form of it. Uh, it, I don't have any indication that it has been altered. Nothing has been cut off of the feet. You can tell when you look underneath. 
Uh, it's just a, a very primitive piece. Here are the cabinet doors and this old paper on the inside. I really like the knobs here are handmade as well. Hand turned. I don't know if you can see. Let me try to focus. It's just sort of slightly out of out of round. Can you see that? Where this was, oh, this was this was a handmade knob. Am I focused? No, I don't think I am. There, I think I am. See that? All handmade. And then I love the uh, latch on this side. I'm probably going to have to refocus again. Hold on for one moment. I'm not doing very. I'm not doing a very good filming job today. Look at this latch. How oh, that's handmade. So a uh, step back. Pine cupboard uh, and we've got the nice thing is this knob fell off but I've got it thank goodness somebody broke it and but they saved it it's down inside one of these drawers I have to find it and I can put it back in place I wouldn't say that this is necessarily my style of furniture but I certainly recognize a nice piece when I see it this never hung on a wall it always sat just like that with cabinet doors low to the to the ground. It was a typical form, but this cabinet maker has put uh, his own spin on it and made it just the way that he wanted to the scale that he wanted for uh, its intended use in someone's home. I'm gonna be selling it. Okay, now I've gotta get this stuff out of here. Well, as you can see, I'm busy moving a few more pieces of furniture into the basement. This is the library table that uh, I'm going to be using as a desk, uh, actually in the basement. I did a little bit of cleaning and restoration work on the top. Didn't refinish it and I'm not going to. I haven't done anything to the bottom yet. Uh, and then Two more of my old Atwater Kent radios. Right here from the 1920s. And then this wonderful great big old ladder back chair, which is about a hundred years old. Which I might use with the desk. I have an oak music stand. Now that I'm gonna be practicing my uh, cornet again. I need the, the uh, music stand. Let's see if you can see some of the, uh, let's see, it's a Hamilton with an unbreakable bass made of oak. And you can tell by that decal on there, that goes back to the at least the 1920s. And I've got a uh, hall table, little half table there I need to do some work on. And then you remember this thing? For the hymns in a church, somebody handmade this and they would be able to put the uh, different numbers in here. Normally there would be three hymns and maybe a psalm, which is pretty typical. And I love how they made organ pipes uh, out of dowels, they're, they're pencils. But if we turn it over to the, to the back side, they, they used an old uh, national biscuit box. See there? <laughs> to make that folk art piece. And what I thought, uh, yeah, it's on a piece of oak. What I thought I would do to it, or do with it, get it back up here and then folk. I'm probably going to hang it in the kitchen or something like that. And it would be a great place to put uh, different photographs you could put on there or the to-do list, the shopping list. Who knows? Just a neat original. Now I'm going to be the only one that has one. So uh, all of this will get 
lugged into the basement and then I have to finish doing the work on this table which was what did I pay 20 bucks for it at a and at an estate sale and then I'll have a chair I can sit there and this is going to be the table where I probably do my packing of my eBay uh, uh, winnings from the store eBay store that kind of thing all right it's cold out here I'm ready to get inside I believe that's all for today's shopping trip and thrift haul. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate you watching. What do you think? Tell me in the comments below. I'll read it. Okay, folks, I'm Scott from the old Curiosity Shop. Wait for the cat. And so long for now.